swimming right into my bank account. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now today's video is another fantastic, really primo jewelry haul. This is a selection of gold and silver that I picked up at an estate sale this past weekend. And oh my lord, is it fantastic. I'm not talking about your run-of-the-mill gold and silver stuff. We have a couple of pieces that are just regular gold and silver, but we also have just an insane amount of super high quality and designer jewelry, gold and silver. So I'm gonna let you bask in all this glory for a moment, and then we'll get into it. So like I said before, why don't we get through all of the run-of-the-mill stuff, and then we can focus on the real primo stuff. So over here we've got a little section of silver stuff. Uh, we have this little brooch. This little pin is a very classic design from Mexico. I've seen it a million times. I've bought it and sold it a million times. And uh, you know, it's, it's nothing too special, but hey, as we say, silver is silver. We've got a, two little kidney shaped, ooh, there we go. We've got two little kidney shaped earrings. These are clip-on earrings, so they are you know, just uh, your run-of-the-mill, non-designer clip-on earrings, but they are of a particular style. They are a fairly popular style, uh, so I think these should sell pretty well. I probably won't scrap them. We've got this nice ring. I love the design of this ring. I've actually gotten something very similar before, um, and I'm not sure if this is designer or an art piece. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was, like, a kind of ring that was sold in, like, the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art or the MoMA or something in their gift shop and you know the high-end cases that you see when you go to a museum. It's that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do a little more research on this and see if we can't find something about it. This is pretty interesting. I tested this so I do know that it is actually silver but it is one of the strangest silver hallmarks I've ever seen. So as you see here it just says the word silver. I have to say I've never seen this on a piece of jewelry before. In all my years of doing this, I've never seen a authentic piece of silver jewelry marked silver. Anyway, kind of cool, a little bit of an oddity. Now we're starting to get into some of the nicer silver stuff. Over here we have this bracelet, the uh, hugs and kisses bracelet as it's sometimes called with the X's and O's. You've You've seen me buy this a million times over. This is a very classic design and they come in varieties that are more or less nice. This is one of the nicer ones that I've gotten. It's got some really nice stones. I'm not quite sure what these stones are, um, but, but they are particularly nice compared to some of the other ones that I've bought in the past. It is, of course, hallmarked, and that's not too bad either. Now, this is a really, really nice silver piece. This is a bookmark, of course. As you can see, you know, you can split it open so that you can keep your page. But it looks like a little village lady carrying buckets of water at the top. And on the back, it is hallmarked with the, with the very classic antique German hallmark, where it's 800 silver and you see the crown and the moon. And there's another little hallmark there as well. And the other little hallmark seems to read Reiko, or Paco. It's a little hard to tell. It's a little rubbed out, but uh, I have to do a little more research on that. But this is a really, really nice piece. Over here, we have a really nice enameled pillbox. You can see it opens up. It's got enamel and silver. And it is hallmarked 935. So that's an interesting one. It's slightly more pure than the standard sterling 925 silver. Uh, so this is a really nice piece. As you can probably hear, I'm filming outside today again because it is a gorgeous August day and I like filming outside. So please excuse the noise. Okay, so now that we've gotten through some of the run of the mill silver, I'll show you some run of the mill gold. Now, how can there be run of the mill gold? But in any case, over here, we've got a little ring 
it's got some initials on it. It's, in fact, it's so ornate that I can't really make it out. It looks like there's a C or an H. Uh, it's, it's a little bit tough to tell. You guys can guess in the comments below what on earth these initials are, uh, or if it's just a design. But we have this really, really nice gold ring. You can see it's hallmark there. It's mostly rubbed out, but it is indeed 14 karat gold. Um, and uh, this is a nice chunky little piece, so that'll bring some good money. All right, so that's it for the quote unquote run of the mill gold. Uh, and the reason for that is that everything else that I have that's gold has at least somewhat, uh, some degree of a premium or is somewhat more interesting than just a typical chunky ring that will scrap. So let's start with this over here. So in this box, we open it up and we first see that it says A.E. Betteridge Greenwich. Now I'm assuming that that Greenwich refers to Greenwich, Connecticut, which is an extremely ritzy area of Connecticut, uh, one of the wealthiest areas in all of the United States. And this is a very, very high quality uh, double knot cufflink. And you can probably tell that it is indeed hallmarked. A little tough to read, but it says 14K. And there is a little symbol next to it that I can't quite make out who the maker is. So I'm gonna need to do a little more research on these guys. Um, but I do believe that these are designer. If anybody has any info of, uh, I guess, what kind of jewelry A.E. Betterich sold uh, or sells, uh, that would be super helpful. But these, I know, are definitely going to command a nice premium over their melt weight. Next up in the gold category, we have this gorgeous articulated fish. Now, you've seen me buy these a bunch of times in silver, but not that frequently in gold. And this is a really long one. You can see it is as long as my middle finger almost. And it is absolutely stunning. Uh, there is no marking that I can tell. Like, there's a marking here that I can see is partially rubbed out. And on one side, it says Italy. And the other side, it says 5-0. Um, or what I think is 5-0, so I tested it, and I did find that it is indeed 18 karat gold, and that 5-0 corresponds to what was once 750. So look at that. I mean, I'm not sure what the eyes are made out of, but this is a really, really well-crafted, uh, articulated gold fish, and I have done really, really well selling articulated fish pendants, both silver and gold, uh, and I think this is the biggest and highest quality one I've ever gotten. So I am really, really excited for this. You can swim away, see? Swimming right into my bank account. All right, next up in the gold category is this watch. It says Universal Genève, which is a company that I found a little bit of information about, but I wasn't really able to find too, too much about this particular watch, at least. But the case is indeed marked 14K at the bottom right there. The band that is also marked 14K585. So this is, well, excuse the dogs in the background. They're also excited about this 14 karat gold watch. No, but seriously, this is a really, really nice chunky piece of gold. If it is indeed a good watch after I do some more research, I will sell it as such. Otherwise, I'll pop out the movement and I will scrap this baby like there's no tomorrow. And I'll apologize in advance to everybody that believes everybody should preserve every single last piece of gold or silver, whether it is nice, ugly, valuable or not. But there are certain things that I do not have a problem with scrapping and I will continue to do so. It's been a very profitable business for me. And uh, no, I am not worried about destroying the history of a broken Universal Geneve watch. So, you can yell at me in the comments below. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to business. So let's shift back our gears to some silver, and then maybe we'll finish up with some things that are mixed, both silver and gold. So as you can see here, you see in this gorgeous light blue that whenever you guys who are out at garage sales see it, your heart probably skips a beat because you know that that means Tiffany & Co. That's right, Tiffany & Co, one of the most popular designer jewelry pieces out there, and I was lucky enough to get at least four pieces, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. There are four pieces that are obvious here. So this one is the musical note, um, and it is, of course, a bookmark as well. It is indeed Hallmark, Tiffany & Co. 
925. It's a very nice piece. Very thin, doesn't weigh too much. Won't sell for that much, but hey, anytime I can get Tiffany at, uh, at a melt price, I'm happy to buy that. So these are Tiffany & Co. earrings. They're an interesting pair because their locking mechanism is kind of unique. They have the stud, as typical uh, earrings do, but it also has this clip that sort of holds it into place instead of a regular back. So it's almost like a clip-on and a regular earring all in one. Now it is definitely a little tough to see on the camera all of the markings on the inside, but basically it is a Tiffany & Co. piece that has both 14 karat gold and silver. So the main chunk is silver, and these little bands that run down are all 14 karat gold. So there's a lot of Tiffany pieces out there. In fact, there's another one I'm about to show you that have both gold and silver intertwined. I've shown you them in previous videos, um, but it's pretty cool and it definitely ups the value. Over here we have uh, a typical Tiffany & Co. keychain. I've gotten these before with all sorts of things inscribed. This one is the American Friends of, is, of the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. It was probably sold or given out um, to patrons. And uh, of course it's Tiffany & Co. 925. Nothing too exciting there, but if there are collectors of Philharmonic Orchestra uh, memorabilia or of Tiffany collectors, there, this will certainly be a piece that they'd be interested in. So I'll probably pop that one up on eBay. Now this is an incredible Tiffany & Co. piece. This guy right here is silver on the outside, gold, 14 karat gold on this little rectangle, and there are four little emeralds. And it is gorgeous. As nice as it looks on camera, when it's sparkling in the light, it is absolutely spectacular. Really, really spectacular. And uh, it is hallmarked over there. The shadow's obscuring it a little bit, but it is indeed hallmarked. And I have seen these on eBay sell for over $400. This pin alone sells for $400 plus dollars. Now, I paid essentially spot for all of the stuff that you see here. I paid spot or actually a little bit under for some of the stuff, which is fantastic, fantastic for Tiffany & Co. stuff. For the non-Tiffany stuff like this, I probably paid about 70% of spot, which I am totally happy with. Um, you know, I could s scrap whatever I want and sell anything I can for a bigger premium and still make a really, really hefty profit. Um, the Tiffany & Co. stuff, of course, I was not able to get uh, below spot, but hey, if you can get Tiffany at spot, you just buy it and then hope for the best later. And in these cases, you know, I'll still sell these far above spot, but I'm not going to make a fortune. With this, I mean, I think I paid like, I want to say 40 or 50 bucks for it because, you know, we sort of noodled out how much gold was in there and the silver and they said that the em emeralds on their own weren't really worth anything so i was able to buy this for like 50 bucks and it'll probably sell for between 300 and 500 dollars so that is just phenomenal so that is all for the exclusively tiffany stuff but we also have here an incredible charm bracelet now the reason this charm bracelet is so incredible is because the bracelet itself is gold. There are a bunch of really chunky ch uh, charms, including a little tennis racket. This looks like some kind of Egyptian thing. I know it looks almost like it's broken, but it actually is printed with little Egyptian hieroglyphics on there. There's a little Jewish ornament. There is a silver coin in a fake gold bezel. There is a a little moccasin type thing. It's like almost like the wooden shoes. There is a ski set, 14 karat gold, a tennis racket with a little pearl, the Eiffel Tower, which I believe is Tiffany's. I have to check again. It's not marked Tiffany's, um, but I've seen it on their website. So it's either a knockoff, but either way it is 14 karat gold. We have this chunky, chunky 14 karat gold locket. It's like a bell and it opens up and it's like a pill box or maybe for photographs. And it says ABC on the back. Not 100% sure why. 
it has this little thing, which I don't really even know what it is. But this is the only, it's got like this weird like stone in the bottom. I really don't know what this is, and I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I actually, this is the only one that is gold plated. I'm not even sure what it's doing on there. Maybe the person who owned this uh, didn't know either. But, as I said, there were three more Tiffany & Co. things. One, two, and three. And these all say Tiffany & Co. Sterling plus 18 karat gold. And on the other side, you can see that it says Masters. Now, I believe, based on the fact that there's this tennis racket here, and the person was clearly a big tennis fan, that each of these is from a different year of the Tennis Masters. Now, I cannot find a single thing online about these little pendants, these little charms. So, if I'd like to challenge all of you guys, if any of you guys know anything about these three Tiffany & Co. Masters charms, I would love to hear about it, because these seem to be exceedingly rare. And, I mean, these might have been just given to select people that uh, attended the Masters, or were involved in the Masters in some other way, um, but these are definitely special pieces. And aside from all that, this is chunky as hell, and it is really a really nice piece. I am sure I will do well on that. Uh, one last piece of silver that's pretty interesting, before I show you the piece de resistance, is this little uh, cigarette tip. This is like an antique tip for a cigarette, and it has uh, either plastic or even maybe it's ivory, but I think it's a it's an old plastic uh, tip at the bottom and a sterling silver uh, fairly ornately designed uh, shaft and I believe that these actually go for quite a bit of money um, I don't know about this exact one. It doesn't have a designer marking or anything, but it is marked 925 on the inside rim. It's a little tough to see but this is really a nice little piece. Now, the moment you didn't know you were all waiting for, but surely are, is this. This is something that I've been looking for for years. Literally years. I saw on a TV show once, maybe it was like American Pickers or it might have been Antique Road Show. It was one of those shows where they said that there are these very finely made chain link male sterling silver purses out there and these are handmade and they can go for thousands of dollars now some of them only go for hundreds and this may be the case for this one i don't know i still need to do a lot more research but it is in excellent condition this is a fully sterling silver little purse Look at that. It's chain mail. It's in excellent shape. It feels, in my hand, you don't understand how light and amazing this feels. It is like taking 500 thin silver necklaces and just putting them into your hand like that. It feels like nothing else. Incredible. It's like this soft heaviness all at the same time. And on the inside, the fabric is still in immaculate condition. It's very delicate feeling, but it is, there's no holes or anything. And you can see here where it's hallmarked and has all the information. I have to do more, more digging uh, on this and, and understand what these markings mean. And I did call it sterling, by the way. This is actually 800 silver, as you can see here. Uh, just misspoke, but this is probably from Germany, given that um, 800 silver was very popular there. Um, so this is like something that I have been looking for for years and hoping to find and I finally did. The only damage on the whole thing is to the enamel work over here and on the other side same thing. A little damage to the enamel work. Um, so it is not in mint condition but it is in absolutely spectacular shape and I am just over the moon for having gotten this. So for all of you out there, this is a PSA to the Silver Picker Squad. Any of you that are at estate sales or garage sales or wherever else you go picking and you see a sterling silver purse, even if it's a little more expensive than you want to take the chance on it because it could be worth thousands. I will definitely do a follow-up video on this when I do more research and find out how much it's actually worth. 
Um, if it's a disappointment and it's only worth $200, I'm fine with that. I think I only paid about 60 bucks for it. And the if it's worth thousands, then I will jump for freaking. So anyway, that is all folks. I am hoping that you guys enjoyed this video. I am just over the moon for this. I know for all of you guys that watch my channel exclusively for coin content, I apologize for this one, but you probably turned it off in the middle anyway, so you're not listening to me say this. So for all of you that, all of you that watch this till the end, thank you very much. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope you understand that there still is tons and tons of silver to be gotten out there, tons and tons of gold to be gotten out there at garage sales and estate sales. This estate sale was fantastic I can't believe how good the prices were and uh, I'm just I'm just really ecstatic about it so anyway for those of you who have not yet joined the silver picker squad and have not yet subscribed what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button we learn about all sorts of cool things I show you the stuff I bought I teach you what I know and hope that you guys go out there and make some money on your own uh, please leave me a comment below if you have anything to say. Nice or not, I will listen to your comments. I love reading them, I read every one of them, and I try to respond as much as I can. Uh, hit me up on these social media sites. I post things here before my videos drop. You get a lot of exclusive content. And until next time, as we say, Silver Picker out.